are welcome. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar, and we are here in Petaling Jaya. We are at the Kiwanis Down Syndrome Foundation National Center, and today's topic is going to be children who have Down syndrome and the education program set up here. And we're actually going to talk to a parent about their experiences handling their own child who has Down syndrome. Join me into this episode. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. Thank you for joining me. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar, and we are in Kiwanis Down Syndrome Foundation uh, here in Pataling Jaya. So, uh, we are actually going to be talking about educating uh, Down syndrome children, and with me today is Joy. Thank Hi. you, Joy, for joining me today. So, Pleasure. Joy, um, let's talk about the centre. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you can give us a brief about Kiwanis uh, Centre. Um, Kiwanis Down Syndrome Foundation um, cent National Centre started. Um, the idea of setting up a centre for children with Down Syndrome started in 1988 by a group of Kiwanians from oh. Kiwanis Club of Kuala Lumpur. Wow, 1988. Um, Yes. I was actually born in 1988, so yes, that's a I long time ago. Yes, I was four years old. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, they were thrown a challenge to, mm -hmm. to come out with a long-term project, mm -hmm. and hence they come out with a Kiwanis Down Syndrome Foundation. Mm -hmm. So the first class started in 1989 with about 12 students. Okay. And then now 30 years later, it grew, the, the numbers grew into about 140 students. You guys have 140 yeah. students. And we have moved here in our own premise mm -hmm. in Taman C. So mm -hmm. we have our classroom facilities, um, therapy equipment, we have therapy rooms, sensory rooms, and we have resource and mm -hmm. library center. We do have our waddling pool for our swimming and hydrotherapy sessions, and we also have halls for meetings and events. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what type of programs do you guys offer? You guys are a center for Down syndrome. Uh, maybe you can talk about the programs and that such of, of what you guys actually do for, for, for Down syndrome kids. Um, KDSF offers early intervention program for mm -hmm. children with Down syndrome from two months to six years of age. Okay. And that includes... From two months? Yes, okay. from babies. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. So, that includes physiotherapy, occupational therapy services, and special education um, services. Okay. And... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Talking about early intervention, why was this called early intervention? Because, as we all know, Down syndrome is something, like you guys, like you said, two months to six years, was it? Two yes, six, six years. To six years. So, in what do you guys actually do? I mean, it's quite interesting when you say two months. Two months, does the child actually uh, react to, to different types of stimulants or... Or pictures or things like that when they're even two months old? Yes, they do from babies. Like um, for us as a therapy, we actually look into the basic development of mm -hmm. their milestones. So like for example, as a baby, how, how do they feed? How does the mother feed them? Um, whether it's uh, through breastfeeding or through bottle feeding, so we actually assist the parents when so it comes to So even breastfeeding is different for a child with Down syndrome, is it? Um, yes, they will have some. They will oh, have some difficulty when it comes to their um, oh. breastfeeding mm -hmm. due to their. Um, muscle weakness around and inside their mouth mm. and some poor awareness around their mouth. Wow, yeah. okay. So, <laughs> we can say that when the child is born is already everything is completely different from, okay, let's say a family, a, a mom and a dad have a child, a, a normal child and then the second child is a Down syndrome, it's going to be a very different experience. Um, for both children or is there going to be some similarities as such? Well, of course, uh, babies, they are still babies, right? And we always tell parents like, um, um, they are blessings, so whether your child is um, neurotypical or maybe um, with Down syndrome, mm -hmm. we, we always congratulate you, especially yeah, new yeah, parents. Definitely. But the ex whole experience of them actually yes, having, um, it starts when the child is yes, born? Yes, from, from the time they are born. Okay, yeah. okay. 
Maybe you can go into what you do exactly specifically. Um, okay, so like um, in the center, actually, we we apply more on holistic approach, mm -hmm. meaning we look at the child's holistic development. So okay. we are not um, into a specific part of their um, areas of development. Okay. We we look into their um, gross motor development, fine motor development, cognitive development, social emotional skills, um, their language skills, mm -hmm. also their sensory skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are actually very important important components for a child to be able to develop that. How is those skills that you just mentioned, how is that different from a normal child and adult children? What mm -hmm. are the differences that you can see? Um the, there's not much difference actually even a typical child will have all these uh, developments it's just that for our children with down syndrome it takes time for them to to learn mm. right the, um, i always tell parents we will get there it's mm. just that it takes time for them to be able to get there mm. i think patience yeah. is very also yes an important patience part. and a lot of hard work both from from parents and the kids itself mm -hmm. yeah so and there should be a lot of support from you know, around the family itself. Okay, maybe you can give us an example of what you do specifically when you work on a child. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the few things that you see uh, Down syndrome ch kids, uh, children and babies and things like that? What is the, one of the first things that you see as a physical therapist? One of the first things you say, oh, we'll need to do something about that. Um, all right, so f like I said, number one, as a baby, when they come to us, we mm -hmm. look into their feeding skills. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, because feeding is your number one survival skill, okay. so we we pay so much attention on how they suck. Mm -hmm. We have this reflex that we call it um, sucking, swallowing, and breathing pattern. So mm -hmm. we pay attention into that mm -hmm. to assist the parents, mm -hmm. help the parents how to, to actually work with their child. We teach them some oral motor exercises or things like that to, mm -hmm. to, to increase awareness on the child's mouth mm -hmm. and also to, to improve their sucking skills, for example. So when you do, or you say you, you have a session to, to, to try to improve a child's motor systems and things like that, is it, does it vary with every child at every time it's different? Oh yes, yes. It, it still varies from child to child. Yeah. Mm. Among all those 150 students that we have, um, we always do individual, um, individual setting of goals, individual activities. So it all depends upon the child's um, development. Okay, we got to move on to special education program. Mm -hmm. The education programs you guys offer, one of it is what you do, physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. What about the others? Okay, so um, like here in our center, we have different groups, right? So the infant groups, which are the babies, it's solely handled by therapists, okay. right? So once they have a certain, uh, once they have reached a certain maturity wherein the child has uh, reached some level of independence for example when it comes to their walking mm -hmm. or probably social skills able to understand simple commands then they move to bigger class wherein we have our toddler class and the special education class here um, it's mainly facilitated by special education teachers but mm -hmm. it's also supported by PTs and OTs so both teachers and therapists work together to, to plan out um, what are the activities or maybe what are the goals that we have to set for, for the children. Mm. So, and the goals and the activities is very different based on the child? Yes, it's everything individualized. And oh. Okay, we, mm. uh, and, and talking about that, the challenges that you guys face, uh, educating a Down syndrome child, uh, it's definitely going to be very different experience from running a kindergarten as per se. Mm -hmm. How is, what are the types of, of things that you guys go through? Well, I guess... Um, I know there's a lot, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, maybe working with children, not just with children with Down syndrome or with special needs, I guess um, it takes a lot of um, your physical, mental, and sometimes your emotional being. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, physical, come on, like, we crawl, we jump, we run. Mm. If we needed to be on the floor with the babies or maybe we need to tumble with the bigger kids. So mm. we actually do that. So it takes a lot of our energy. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to your sometimes mental exhaustion, um, we also, we, we write reports, daily daily reports. We have our 
um, assessments, documentations, and yeah, it takes a lot of energy. It takes your brain you know, more than jumping, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think on the emotional part, like especially when I first started here, mm -hmm. like um, ten years ago, um, when I meet parents who cry in front of me, like you know, when they share their struggles, then I also tend to be emotional. Then I also cry in front of them. But over time, I learned to to counsel yes, them to, like yeah sort of but uh, in, um, instead of like cry with them but I try to I try to be a cheerer instead yeah mm. so um, I and every day I try to tell myself always put your feet in their in parents shoes because mm. you know parents will always have different perspectives and you try to walk around with it yeah and <clears throat> uh, talking about parents mm -hmm. um, the roles of parents uh, is not an easy situation for a parent once they know that the child has Down syndrome, um, what do you see the parents coming? Do you okay when you started off the center or when you first started here? Do you see a difference in where people are more open to say like, actually, I need help? Uh, and do do they feel like Down syndrome is not as a big issue, as a big disability as it was last time? And and because you work very closely with parents, so do you see this uh, mindset change in, in even in the public as well? running, being in a centre like this, in Down syndrome in Malaysia? Um, yes, I believe like 10 years ago, I think um, maximum students that, that we have was only about 58, 61, and now it reached into 100, yeah, 100, yeah, yeah. more than 100. So um, I, I think that uh, when it comes to awareness and you know, parents are more open instead of hiding their kids inside their house. So now they seek for help. They come out and they usually uh, come to our center. And I think even hospitals and doctors are aware as well. And they refer the babies, newborn babies, to come to our place. And <clears throat> how important is because what you do as a therapist is is it as important as what the role of the parents in educating the child? Oh yes, mm. of course. Like um, we always tell parents. Parents are still the best therapist or the best educator and in fact they're even more than a therapist. Mm. So like um, I always tell parents that you don't have to, you know, like uh, be a teacher to your child because just be a parent. A lot mm. of times th that's the trend that I notice these days. I think parents uh, spend a lot of time teaching their kids academic yeah. um, stuff and all things like that. But um, Not even with parents with special kids yes, but even yes, normal kids. Yes, normal even kids, with yeah, uh, yeah. typical children. Yeah. So. Um, I think it's important to be a parent first, you mm -hmm. know, like how you parent a typical child mm -hmm. or any other kids. Um, do, do the same thing, um, spend quality, quality time with your kids and play with them, do silly stuff, mm -hmm. you know, so then only learning will, will come in. I think, yeah, being a parent and making the child comfortable with the parent is more important than actually telling them or educating them or becoming yeah. the, the academic part. Of, of that relationship. All right, I understand. That's wonderful. Okay, um, we have to look at maybe you can share with us uh, the Down syndrome uh, kids who have maybe moved on from this center. D is there any success stories? Um, okay, so I've only been here for like 10 years. Um, that's that's a long time. <laughs> 10 years, <laughs> <Okay>. by the <laughs> way. <laughs> so, um, not that I know a lot, but then um, those ex students that, that I have handled before. Um, I have this one kid, I'm actually quite surprised he has already graduated from our center mm -hmm. like a few years and then I saw him in the mall and he still recognizes me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, hey, teacher Joy, like, you know, so it's actually a joy for me, like many of our children, once they graduate, they, they usually forget about us mm -hmm. or, you know, they have different things, but, but, um, so I can see how old was he when he graduated? Um, I, um, usually they graduate at the age of six. So okay. I think I, I saw this kid when he was already ten. Mm, yeah, and okay. he still remembers. Well, yeah, mm. and he he conversed quite well. And and according to the mom, uh, the mom homeschools the child, mm. and then he also do some um, outdoor outdoor activities um, and things like that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> is it a is it do you what do you feel when you find that even like when you see your your, your student after four years and they can still converse properly do you, do you feel a sense of 
of relief and, and do you think that this actually makes them ready to take on the world and things like that? Oh yes, of course, like, you know, like whatever success or whatever achievement they have is also, is also an achievement for us. Mm. Yeah, so, and yeah, we also have other ex-students actually who are employed with, with paid jobs. Mm. They work in the hotel, restaurants, and we even have some who are artists. Mm. He paints and then he sells his wow. paintings to the public. Yeah. So, can it be said that it's Down syndrome is just is something that just holds a child back? Maybe for a bit, but end of the day, they can still make something of themselves when they yeah. grow up. Yes, of course. Like, um, mm, yes, like I said just now, it takes time for them to get there. Mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of effort, a lot of encouragement to the kids and also the parents. But, but they will get there you know i always tell the parents they will get there we just have to be patient yeah and yeah we have to encourage them more yeah. and they can look forward to a bright yes. future yes all right thank you joy so much uh, for joining us today and thank you for watching uh, we'll be back right after this we are going to be talking to a parent who has gone through uh, having a Down syndrome child uh, from let's uh, hear from them from their perspective this is health matters with me vision kumar Alright, welcome back. This has been Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. And earlier, um, today's topic is actually about children uh, that have Down syndrome. And earlier, we talked to Joy, who is a physiotherapist, uh, from, and we managed to get the Down syndrome issue from her perspective. But now we have a parent who actually has a child who suffers from Down syndrome. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Alright, so you let's start off with um, the story of your child, Aisha. Yes. Right? So, um, when did you actually find out that she actually had this condition? Um, after I was, when I was pregnant, mm -hmm. when I was tw uh, 26 weeks pregnant, mm -hmm. um, the doctor actually detected that Aisha has a hole in the heart. Okay. Um, so the question is, the doctor told me that, you know, it might be trisomy 21. Mm -hmm. So I Which was is the chromosome, chromosome, the extra chromosome that uh, leads yes. to Down syndrome. Yeah. Exactly. So therefore actually learn, you know, strengthen me actually you know, I was shocked and then I was actually lost of information as well, you know. So at that point of time, then the doctor said, it's okay, you can go through this. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, kids with Down syndrome are able to be trained mm -hmm. and, you know, lead a positive life mm -hmm. as well, yeah. Okay, so the heart disease that she had, is she okay now? Um, you guys had to treat that as yes, well? Yes, yes. Uh, we did have uh, to have an operation mm -hmm. and when she was five months old in IJN, wow. yes. So prior to that, before that's very that, scary. Five months old. Yes, it is. A major operation. It is a major operation mm -hmm. of the heart surgery. Yeah. yeah. So how how was that? that, that um, at five months old, she was you know going to for an operation. Mm -hmm. So then she you know after a few days later, she was out from the ICU, mm -hmm. and it means that she's quite strong mm -hmm. yeah. actually. Yeah. She's a strong kid. Yeah, she's a strong kid. Yeah, and after um, her operation five months old, I could actually see her first smile. Wow. Yeah, that was her smile and we never actually saw her smile prior to that. Mm -hmm. And you know, she was smiling and laughing, you know. That's the joy that we saw in her, actually, yeah. And uh, when you had, when, when, after five months, um, how did you actually find out about, about um, Okay, at first when I was, um, when I delivered Aisha, mm -hmm. Um, I went to Google and I searched actually um, and I found Kiwanis, mm. you know, that does um, early intervention program. Mm. So they actually accept the kids from the age of two months old. Yeah, that was very interesting because just now we talked to Joy and she's like, they accept kids who are two months old and I'm like, wow, even yeah. two months you actually can do something to, 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 to better the development. And exactly. So interesting. So you actually brought Aisha in and yeah, then after I the operation in. of the five. No, the, not really. She goes that. in, yeah, prior oh, to that, okay, and okay. I put in the application when she was like a month old. Okay. Yeah, and she went in when she was four months old, mm -hmm. and she took a break for um, for a month, okay. and then went back to Kiwanis, mm. and then from there you will see, you know, lots of her progress actually. Mm. She's able to actually reach a lot of milestones later on. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, we, it's difficult for me to actually sit here because I don't, I, I've not gone through this experience. Mm. But we want to show your story of, of a parent who actually found out that a child has, has Down syndrome. Um, for all parents out there, yeah. you can actually share with them your, your experience or maybe your advice on how a parent should be able to take this, this news. Exactly. Um, parents should actually um, be focused um, what do they want to do for their child first is try to get an early intervention program you know there's many centers that's actually available out there you know try to approach therapies because as early as one month old you can actually get therapy session for your child so so that they can actually reach the milestones that's what our concerns are um, when they actually reach their cons uh, milestones you will see a lot of progress from there on mm -hmm. and also not forgetting to get support people support. Um, in Kiwanis itself, there is mentor support. You can actually request for them to help you out. Parents who went through um, you know, child with Down syndrome, they could give you more support as well. You know, They can guide you through. That's most important. Yeah. What are the few challenges that you personally face? Um, okay, basically, you know, this is actually the first experience <laughs> I would say. <laughs> you know, it's not as easy. Yeah. Um, but um, the Being Aisha is actually your first child. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, Aisha is my first child and she is, um, the first thing that we need to do is basically, you know, feed milk actually, mm. you know, so due to her, you know, problem with the heart mm. problem, um, she wasn't able to actually suck, mm. you know, so it wasn't a big issue mm -hmm. and then she started to lose weight, about 10% of mm. her body weight mm -hmm. and then uh, from there you see the OT, which is the occupational therapist. Yep. Yeah. So that's the first step you need to notice, mm. yeah, whether the child is actually being fed well mm. or not, yeah, okay. Okay. yeah. And um, after she started to, to, to feed well, what was one of the things that you realized saying that this is actually a very big, very big challenge, I need yeah. to be stronger and things like that. How has your family been actually uh, my throughout family, all this? My family has been very supportive, mm -hmm. just that they do not understand um, sometimes why does uh, it takes longer time for mm -hmm. them, yeah. Um, I think many people actually don't realize this. Actually, the biggest muscle actually is our organs, is our muscle. Um, it works well. It has to be work well because kids with Down syndrome, the hypertonia, their muscles are weak. Yeah. So in order to get them to walk, to eat, feed them independently, you know. It takes a longer time. Yes. Than, 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 yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I guess those are the challenges that you will face. You say, how come this child is not able to do what we wanted them to do? Yeah. So you just have to keep keep at it. You have to keep at it, and you have to be consistent, and you know, read a lot of books. I would say, yeah. get more information. Uh, do not depend on so much on internet. So much, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about your uh, the education program, uh, yes. early parenthood. How do you? How important do you think it is for parents who bring their, their children in, in centers like this? Mm. How important is those, those programs? Okay, it is very important, as, uh, especially for babies. If they can start as early as possible, um, they will actually learn gross motor skills. You know, mm -hmm. gross motor skills are basically the heavy works like you know, your external muscles that you need to work on. Yep. So upon when they sign up, then they will see the progress of the child going through forward, and then from there, the child is able to actually walk. Um, then they will move on to toddler class. Then you'll see more social skills, uh, improving their fine motor skills and all that, yeah, and then so on forth. Yeah. So, this is surely high, highly recommended for, for, for parents to actually bring their kids into centres like this. Correct. Um, what about the socialising part? I mean, was, was it easier for Aisha to actually socialise with uh, her, her other uh, classmates and things like that or was that yeah. difficult? It, it was uh, not difficult because I started with her with a lot of playgroup session mm, uh, okay. with typical children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so she actually goes to little gym, uh, you know, she actually perform, you know, oh. very well, oh, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, and um, you see she's able to mingle with other typical children, able to follow instruction. That shows that she's can she can do it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, yeah. yeah. was quite interesting. Like you shared with me a small story about she knew about the interview today. And yes. And, and then you know, yeah. she 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 um, she's definitely a person who's actually a very strong-willed person. And yeah. uh, we can move on into. We try to, in shows like this, in programs like this, we actually try to uh, tell everyone who's watching at home that it's not the end when 
person is suffering from a certain type of condition. Correct. So maybe you can tell us from your perspective, um, how does the future look for you and how does the future look for Aisha? Okay, uh, for me, um, it's not the end actually in the road uh, because kids with Down syndrome, they can actually be trained and um, with consistency of the parents' help, um, the kids are able to actually achieve better. If you could actually see um, a lot of stories uh, shared among overseas and they're also in Malaysia as well, parents to actually help the kids to actually be independent. They could actually work in um, like in hospitality business and uh, in a cafe, you know, so it's not the end actually. Yeah, so you can actually work with centres that actually works uh, to have a placement job. Yeah, so that is possible. Yeah. So much for okay. Alright, thank you for watching. This has been Health Matters with me, Vishen Kumar. And today we have covered a lot on uh, children who have Down syndrome. Uh, it's uh, something that affects a lot of people, affects their parents. We got a few perspectives, uh, one from a physiotherapist and also from a parent. Uh, the most important thing we have to take away from this episode is uh, it's still a bright future for these children and uh, we cannot give up on them. Uh, I'll catch you in the next episode. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. Goodbye.